Many people drive past the Milwaukee Brewers Stadium and notice what looks like a haunted mansion in the distance. But have no idea what it is. It's a national treasure. It happens to be a huge part of American history and our dedication to U.S. military veterans. The story of the Soldiers' Home in Milwaukee starts with the women. I will have a Soldiers' Home in Milwaukee, and I will not stop until it is an accomplished fact, and that's settled. And I will do it with you, and I know that we can count on Hannah Vetter as well. Lydia Eli Hewitt, Fanny Burling Buttrick, and Hannah Vetter were part of a volunteer group of young women whose efforts eventually brought a permanent national home for disabled and homeless soldiers, now called the Milwaukee Soldiers Home. These women, many of whom were the wives of prominent businessmen, started to care for Civil War soldiers shortly after the war began in 1861. A year later, they formed the West Side Soldiers Aid Society. The home was not just to be for Civil War soldiers, but for those of all wars. Historian Patricia Lynch, author of Milwaukee Soldiers Home, often portrayed Fanny Burling Buttrick during historical reenactments. Here is her 2013 interview about the society on the Milwaukee PBS program, I Remember. Um, but these particular women who lived on the west side of the Milwaukee River uh, began to refocus their efforts to care for those men who were passing through Milwaukee. Either they were coming here to one of Milwaukee's Civil War camps and were in need or passing through on furlough or coming back from the battlefield with uh, illness or um, uh, just needs for shelter, food. The women were creating a temporary home. Uh, it's on uh, Plankington, that mm -hmm. was West Water Street, uh, between Wisconsin and uh, Wells. They started with one storefront at 207 West Water and eventually uh, rented four or five more. At the time that these women were doing it, women could not serve. And so this was their way to serve. Iraq War veteran Yvette Pino was the art curator for Old Main, that iconic residential building seen from the freeway. She made sure to put women's stories at the center of her work, including the founders. When the women that were in charge of it had that, that strong business sensibility, but they had strong project management sensibility. It certainly was a cause that President Abraham Lincoln believed in. In his second inaugural address, Lincoln eloquently laid out his vision for a national soldier's home. With malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right, let us strive to finish the work we are in to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow and his orphan, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. Back in Milwaukee, these women were already in pursuit of a permanent home for Wisconsin's veterans. Our boys are coming back maimed, crippled, helpless for life. As members of the West Side Soldiers Aid Society, we must build them a permanent home of magnificent proportions for which we don't even have marble white enough. But their vision required funding. And so they organized a month-long soldiers' home fair that started on June 28, 1865. It featured art and natural history exhibits, music and entertainment, home-cooked food, and Old Abe, the famous bald eagle who became the mascot of the 8th Wisconsin Volunteer Infantry Regiment. This is going to be a fair for the ages. It's just amazing how people are backing us. And I think that we are going to be able to put on a program and give them things the likes of which they've never seen before. The fair raised more than $100,000. It was enough to purchase 400 acres of land on the outskirts of Milwaukee. The women's vision for a permanent soldier's home was coming to fruition. And that's when things got a little complicated. 
So our West Side Soldiers Aid Society moves to the next step, a permanent home for these heroes. By now, a couple of years had passed since Lincoln's call to build a national soldier's home system, and the federal government finally began looking for locations. That's when the wealthy husbands of these women persuaded officials to build one of its first homes in Milwaukee, officially called the Northwestern Branch of the National Home for Disabled Volunteer Soldiers. While the women were somewhat reluctant to relinquish their money, a near identical version of their vision was about to become reality. The National Soldiers' Home in Milwaukee is one of only three that are still around today. The other two are in Togus, Maine and Dayton, Ohio. The grounds of the Soldiers' Home were a scenic countryside with rolling hills, flower gardens and lakes, a tranquil setting for men returning home from combat. The public also enjoyed the park-like setting. Patriotic celebrations and concerts attracted as many as 300,000 visitors in a single year. Over the decades, Milwaukee Soldiers Home and the adjoining cemetery grew as it welcomed home new generations of veterans. Today, the Clement J. Zablocki Veterans Administration Medical Center towers on the campus. But over time, some buildings like Old Main fell into disrepair. Thankfully, a recent restoration effort meant that Old Main is once again housing veterans. It includes a women's wing, where you'll find dedications to Lydia Eli Hewitt and Fanny Burling Buttrick, the women founders who deserve recognition. We can be proud of all that we accomplished. You and I are <laughs> proud. There's much more to learn about these pioneering women. We'll explore the biographies of Lydia Eli Hewitt and Fanny Burling Buttrick in our next episode of The Women Founders, Milwaukee Soldiers Home. Mm -hmm.